Yeah, lactate, the stuff that makes your legs burn and seize up, right? The waste product. Well, that's the classic view. And yes, <laughs> producing lactic acid during, say, a sprint lowers pH and affects muscle function, that's where the whole lactate threshold idea comes from. We use lactate levels to gauge training intensity, recovery needed. That's standard practice. It is. But the new thinking, the really revolutionary part, is that lactate isn't just waste. It's actually a signaling molecule, and it's fuel. Fuel? For what? For other cells, especially slow-twitch muscle fibers. And yeah. get this for certain gut bacteria too, like the lactobacillus and bifidobacteria we mentioned. The gut bacteria eat lactate. Some of them do, and they turn it into butyrate, which as we said is an energy source itself, provides maybe 20% of our energy from those short chain fatty acids. So having a good population of those bacteria actually helps you recycle lactate and boost performance. Okay, mine's slightly blown. Is there data on Killian showing this in action? Oh yeah, UTMB 2022. Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc, at kilometer 150, that's after like 17 hours of running, his blood lactate measured 19.9 millimoles per liter. 19.9, isn't that, isn't that what you'd see in a sprinter collapsing after a 400 meter race? It's an insanely high level for that duration. But what did Killian do? He launched an attack, broke away, and won the race. He used it. His body didn't see it as poison, it saw it as fuel. Precisely. It points to this incredible metabolic flexibility.